This is the Blackmagic Pocket 4K at ISO 20,000, lit by just what you see here. And this is with noise reduction turned off. Pretty cool, eh? Of all the reasons to switch to Resolve Studio, it seems like for a lot of people, noise reduction is near the top of that list. And I can see why. It allows you to go from a total garbage fire of a shot to something that's actually usable. So today we're gonna go over noise reduction, how to use it, all the reference links down in the description, and also some smart ways to implement it while being kind to your computer. But before we get into that, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more content like this. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve Studio 16, and you can tell with this clip being shot at 20,000 ISO, it's gonna need some work done in the noise reduction department. So as you can see, we do have a bit of a grade on this clip. Now we have to ask ourselves, where does noise reduction go in the node pipeline? Now I often see people saying that you always have to put it at the beginning of your graph, but they never list why. Well, the reason why is you wanna make sure that you're reducing the actual noise introduced from the camera. So to add a node at the beginning, we're gonna hit Shift S and that does that. Now, there are some situations where introducing noise reduction at the beginning of your pipeline can cause issues with a certain type of key that you're trying to do later on. In that case, maybe your best bet is to put the noise reduction at the end of the pipeline. I'm gonna say 95% of the time that's not an issue, but it's good to keep in the back of your mind if you run into that problem and you're like, oh, maybe I should put it at the end. So to clean this clip up, we're gonna go into the motion effects tab and we have two different types of noise reduction. We have temporal noise reduction and spatial noise reduction. Basically temporal noise reduction is impacted over time and it's gonna look at multiple frames and you can select between zero and five frames that it'll kind of average out to look at the changes that are occurring between frames. Now with spatial noise reduction, it's going to deal with more high frequency noise that you just can't quite get with your temporal noise reduction. So I've linked down in the description the page number of the reference manual for noise reduction and it goes over the specifics of each of these parameters just because I don't wanna bore you with them in a video. I just wanna show you how to use them and some techniques that you can do to use them better. With your motion estimation type, better just uses a more advanced algorithm. However, it's harder on your processor, so maybe faster is better for your situation. Similar with spatial noise reduction, there's faster, better, enhanced. Again, you can read all about that in the manual. For this particular shot, we're gonna go with better, and there's not a ton of motion going on in this shot, so we'll stick it with medium. But again, do read about it in the manual so you can know exactly what each one does. So we could just start adjusting sliders and see what happens, but a way I like to do it is I like to know exactly what noise I'm impacting when I'm making adjustments. So I'm gonna go click on highlight, and then I'm gonna go select A, B. Now it turns completely gray, but what we can see is as we make adjustments, we can see the exact noise that we're grabbing out of the clip. Now this gives you a much better idea of what you're impacting. So if we unlink these, and let's say we wanna affect more of the chroma noise, so the color noise, the chroma noise, you notice it doesn't have as big of a factor as if we adjust the luminance noise, which you can kind of imagine with a shot that's this dark. So then it really lets us make some adjustments on our temporal side of things. So now if we take that out, okay, we're noticing some improvements, but it's still fairly garbage town. Now if we go back into our highlight and we start making adjustments on the spatial noise reduction side of things, you'll now see some really big improvements start to come in. So we're really gonna kind of crank that up and I get a kick out of it because it kind of reminds me of, you remember on the back of cereal boxes when you have to squint to see an image? <laughs> you can just see me in there just a little bit. Now this tells you the information that we're kind of going to be blending. So let's bump that up a little bit more. Now we go back and we can see there's quite a difference here. And then you can just continue to make adjustments to fit your specific footage, but this is a pretty extreme example. Let's go to something a little more every day. You see this shot and you see some dancing pixels up in the corner there. It's very slight, but I find them distracting if I don't do noise reduction, so I make sure to do that on every one of these videos. So we're gonna hit Z to fit that to size, and then we're gonna hit Shift S 
to get our node at the beginning of our pipeline. We're gonna then go into motion effects. Again, it's whatever works for your particular footage. So there's no magic number I can give you. I can just point you in the right direction. So I'm gonna go with two on this and then I'm gonna open up my highlight again into AB and see what kind of noise we have. So right off the bat, I know that there's actually a decent amount of chroma noise going on here. So I'm gonna grab that and then let's just bump up our lumen noise a bit. Now we're in faster and you'll notice something right off the jump. If you use faster with regards to your spatial thresholds, things are gonna get muddy pretty quick. So you see how that detail has completely left my face? It's almost like a shot at like 720p or something, but no, it's a 4K shot. If we go into better, it does retain a lot more of that detail, but you need to crank up your thresholds quite a bit more. So just something to be mindful of. And if you go into enhanced, it does allow you to unlink it and do finer adjustments and it works just a little bit better, but pretty hard on your processor. So great, you now have your noise reduction applied, but if we try to play this clip, I have a pretty decent computer too, and we're getting about what, six frames a second? Uh, that's not great. So what you could do is you could turn the noise reduction off of every clip you wanna use it on. And then when you wanna render your video, go into each individual clip and click it back on. But of course, there's an easier way. So I'm gonna click on my clips and you can see I have more of the same shot. Now I have this particular one in a group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift click these and I'm gonna add them into the current group. Now that's gonna add them all into the same group. And the benefit of this is I have the grade actually on the post clip of the group. So if we click up here, we can then make adjustments that impact each clip in the group. And this is great because if we wanna add our noise reduction in the beginning, we go into the group pre-clip and now we can add our noise reduction. So let's just copy over this node, control C. Then gonna go into any of these clips and control V. Great, now we turn that on. Now we have noise reduction, which again, it's gonna play at potato speeds, but we can turn noise reduction off. We'll get pretty good playback and all of these clips with noise reduction can be turned off and then on just super easy. Now that's great if you want a group of clips to have the same noise reduction, but you run into a lot of situations where you have different scenes that require different noise reductions for each scene, so you can add a group for each scene. But if you also have individual clips with noise reduction that you wanna turn on at the end, that can be kind of annoying. So just to make this quick here, we're gonna cut this first clip up into a couple different segments. Then I'm gonna go back into the color page. We're gonna click on light box and you can adjust the clip size here, whatever works for you. But the great thing is it also organizes everything and it has filters. And if that doesn't show up, just click this little doodad right here. Now something we can do, we can go in and click noise reduction and it shows you every clip with noise reduction on it. So let's say we're gonna click on this one. We can close out a light box and make sure that thing is ticked on. And we can also just click on a random clip, press Alt D two times, gonna turn everything off, turn everything back on and you can just do it that quickly. But if you wanna be sure, you can just go in and check and there it is. So it's just that easy and be sure to check the additional notes down in the description for any extra details. Anyway, folks, I hope that helps you out with your noise reduction adventures and turning shots from garbage fires to something great or maybe just polishing up some shots that already look not too bad. Anyway, be sure to hit the like button if you like this video and get subscribed for lots more content like this. Also, let me know what you think of the new audio situation. It does hide a bit of my face, but maybe that's for the better. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.